So we're at a scrap yard collecting some samples and they loaded me up nasty. Up front there, I have 17,000 pounds and this here is only 5,000. So I think this will be all right, but uh, unfortunately I have to load it like this, which kind of sucks to be honest. I'm not a fan of this, but I have to have a gap in between. So I really got to watch my braking for sure. I don't want this flying forward. So we'll see, we'll see how it works out, I guess. He's loading me up here, so I don't have to wait, but I'll have to go to a scale, like a cat scale at a pilot or something to see my numbers, see how much I have to slide. Oh, wow, look at that, that fell out. Yeah, right there. Yeah, let's get loaded and uh, get going. What's up, y'all? Hopefully everybody's doing good. I just pulled in here to a pilot. What I was gonna do is actually go uh, scale out to make sure I'm good. I had to put some straps in front of that load since it was loaded. There's a gap in between. I never like having a gap in between my loads, but the first guy should have loaded it kind of in the middle, but even that, that's weird because load shifts left to right. So like, it's just not how I like having my loads done, but it is what it is, you know? It just, sometimes you just don't have a choice. But anyways, we're stopped here. My numbers are good on my on my axles and uh, I'm gonna make some food. But in the meantime, I wanna make a video to you guys about my quote unquote APU that I've been working on. Uh, I have it actually finally done, everything is good. Uh, and the thing, knock on wood, works absolutely great, I must admit. So like, I'm really, I'm really happy with how it came out. Last night I ran it uh, on heat. It ran for about, 12 hours on a gallon of, 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 of gasoline on my generator, since that's what I use for power. Uh, so I would say that's absolutely amazing, to be honest. And hopefully this thing is as efficient with cooling as it is with heating. It hasn't been that cold, so I can't really say it's very efficient. I would say that if it gets like really cold, like, you know, below 20 degrees or something, 10 degrees, like I would say in those instances, I would just use my diesel heater so I don't have to force my generator to start in the cold and et cetera, et cetera. But other than that, if it's like, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 degrees or something that, you know, you just want to be a little bit more comfortable inside and, and et cetera, you can just run it on heat and it's absolutely great because this thing you can set the temperature what you want it to and it's just gonna run until it reaches that temperature and then it's gonna shut down but yeah without further ado let's go ahead and show you my setup first i'm gonna start with the generator then we're gonna show you the outside unit then we're gonna show you the inside unit and i'm gonna turn it on and show you how everything works and then after that uh we're gonna go into cost breakdown and kind of explain to you exactly how much i spent on this since i'm sure people are wondering hey is this even worth doing etc cetera, etc cetera. what i paid i believe it's worth it but to each their own everybody's gonna have different opinions so without further ado let's get into it so first of all this is my generator box everything is dirty because i was picking up in some dirty places so this is the generator box this is a fan vent that I installed on here and in the back here. I used to have an exhaust, but this exhaust is not connected. So right now there's just a hole. And then this here is like a hose that goes into the box. It's got little washers. And then this hose just runs right into the cab right here. And that is my extension cord. My heavy duty, I think it's like a 10 gauge wire. Uh, extension cord and it runs underneath the bed and up in the corner so I can have plug and then in here let me grab my key there we go so this is my generator nothing fancy uh, what I did is I actually got a hole in the floor you can see so when this fan is on and it's pulling the air from the floor it's essentially bringing all the hot air out and there's a hole in the corner right there and a little vent right there so this fan can be efficient and actually work and then so I mean all I do is just start it up these are my cables this is my fan cable and this is my cord as you can see the cord rides in there in the corner and then what I plan to do is add an extended around fuel tank here and then just run it to the generator and they'll be all right but that's as far as that goes and then if we walk on the other side here
I have another box. This one's just for storage. I made a little step right here. Grab this. This is the outside unit. So this is the outside condenser. As you can see, it sits on these rubber, rubber pads, whatever you want to call them. And then they're just drilled right into the floor, right there and right there. I had this bracket made along with the extended run fuel tank bracket. Uh, this thing is solid. There's a metal beam in here that it's drilled into, as you can see, and it does great. This is the outside unit. These are the cables. Uh, this is a cable that connects the outside unit to the inside unit, and then this one here is the power cable. And they both run there. And uh, run right down, as you can see. And then they literally just run underneath, as you can see, and go into the cab. So uh, right now I think what I'm gonna do is just gonna fire this thing up and go inside and, and go from there. So on the inside here, it's kind of a mess. Uh, as you can see, my floor is very, very dirty. I haven't been cleaning, I've just been walking in here in my shoes, so I need to clean that and clean my dash and whatnot. But uh, yeah, this is the inside unit, as you can see. Let's power it off. So you can see the fan just comes down. And then, the reason it was on is because it ran last night until it ran out of fuel, and then it just shut off. So, up here I got my new bike that I bought. Uh, here's my microwave, cardboard, fridge. But yeah, this is the inside unit, as you can see. So essentially, the lines come from the floor up here through this box and go right through this over here. And actually, after this video, I'm gonna throw in a video on how I installed this so you can get an idea how this is routed in. And then other than that, obviously, the drain line goes right through this, which will be in the video that I'll be showing you. But yeah. This is the inside unit, nothing fancy, nothing special. I made this wooden bracket, carpeted it. As you can see, just sits right there, nice and solid. So yeah, let's show you the video, how I installed this, and then we'll turn it on and show you how it works. What's up, y'all, what's up? Today is Saturday. As you can see, I'm in the mess of my truck. I'm installing the interior unit because it's raining and uh, the guy didn't finish my bracket yet. Let's close that door so it's not, it's not raining, raining, but it's like that annoying rain. Anyways, I'll show you what I'm doing and I will go from there. So this is going to be my drain line. This is a PVC 3 8 and I think that this should suffice as far as the thickness to, to drain. It goes right here along the wires through there and goes in here and then I cut a hole right in there and goes down into the engine bay and directly to the floor. So hopefully that'll do good. And then, you know, once it's done, I'm gonna put the little metal piece back on here and uh, hopefully it fits with this thickness. If not, well, I don't know, then I'll have to go from there. But yeah, I'm trying to clear everything out here and here so I can cut some holes inside here to try and guide the lines through. So yeah, let's do that. All right, so definitely made a mess, but here are the AC lines, the flexible AC lines. And then uh, I think what I might have to do is bend these to 90 degree or bend the ones on the interior unit on a 90 degree because them coming in at this angle, you know, going all the way like this is gonna keep bending the pipe. Uh, and then they basically go through in here, obviously, and right here. This stuff is a mess to cut. Uh, this stuff cutting it is like freaking drywall. It's like making a huge mess, but you know, do it once and and be good is is the goal essentially but yeah they're just gonna sit right here and then the ones are gonna come through the floor up there from the back so that's the plan i insulated them and next i forgot some two by fours on the inside for the uh to mount the interior unit so that was kind of a fail so uh i think what i might have to do is actually run to home depot 
and get some two by fours because the way i'm gonna mount it there's a bracket here that i made and then on the inside two by four drill through this and then just screw in the screws and that should hold it so that's the plan let's see what we'll do but yeah it's definitely a mess in here i'm gonna have to sort this whole thing out all right so as y'all can see there is wood chips and whatnot absolutely everywhere but i got this thing in this is basically the bracket i made to mount the actual uh thing where the mini split will go so yeah a uh, guy did this in here i think that uh for today i might actually just uh do this as i got it and then put in the thing because i don't have the pipe bender with me might just leave it at this and uh then whenever i come back when i have the tube bender for ac lines then i'll actually uh finish it up but yeah let's see what we'll do all right y'all so hopefully you can see well we got the ac in this is the interior unit it'll be great because it's gonna be sucking in the the hot air from up top it's collecting up there uh, and then what I am gonna have to do is once I have another set of hands to help me take this down cut the hole around the AC line connect it and then do the wire and then work on the outside but yeah that'll do it for this part of the video all right so this is my remote I, uh, I installed a little thing right here so it just sits right there and if I want to turn it on, I just grab this thing, hit on, and the thing will open up. And it's currently set on 80 degrees, so it might not even come on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on 65. And I'm going to put mode to cool. I'm going to put the fan all the way up so it's on the highest setting. I don't know if you can hear that. That's literally just the air coming out. And this is how loud it is. You tell me if you can hear the generator in here. You can barely hear it. If you're sleeping right here, you can hear it a lot more. But I would say that generator is probably as quiet as an APU, if not quieter. Here, let's go outside and show you what it sounds like when this is on. That's it. That's how quiet my generator is. The generator is like barely even using any power. I think this thing probably uses less than four or five hundred watts. And then the outside unit is completely like silent. Look at this. It literally is not making any noises, unlike a home unit. So like when this AC is on, I could definitely run my microwave and my AC at the same time. No problem. Uh, however, my air fryer, I could not because that thing hogs a lot of power by itself. It's making some noises. I don't know why, probably because it's already cold outside and whatnot, but this thing is definitely cooling. It is a strong little thing uh, let's put this on 70 yeah I don't know why it's doing that I'm sure pass but you get an idea right so with all that being shown and done and said uh, let's get to the cost breakdown all right so I know a lot of you guys are kind of like wondering hey like how much did this thing cost and I'm gonna try to break this down as much as I can. There's gonna be a lot of like little things that I may not think of that you may need, but I'm gonna break down the major costs and then you can get an idea and an understanding of kind of uh, how much everything adds up. So let me look at my list. I actually created a list of everything that I was buying. So I kind of get you an idea. So we're gonna start with generators since that was the first thing. So the generator 
when I say generator, I mean my generator, the box, the bracket. When I say generator, I mean everything to get power to the truck. So my generator was $280. Hardware like the little uh, bolts and the little uh, hose adapter and whatnot was $50. The bracket itself to mount the box was $90. Box was $115. The fan was $50. The fittings $15. The hose was $30. Cable was $50. So the generator itself to get power to the truck was $650. So I picked up the generator from a buddy. It was brand new, $280. It's a Craftsman 2200 watt generator. You can pick those up on Marketplace for $300 new all day. Uh, or you can just go to Harbor Freight, get one for 400 bucks. Generator was $650. The AC unit, when I say AC unit, I mean anything AC related to get the AC unit installed outside uh, and in here and then connect them. So my AC unit itself, outside and inside was $800. So then I purchased flexible AC lines to run in here so I don't have to bend the lines. Those were $135. Then I bought an AC vacuum, which was $115 to vacuum the lines once you install it. Then I bought AC tube bender, which was $42. AC flare tool was $30. AC wrench to, to uh, because I bought a torque wrench and I ended up not even using it to be honest. Uh, flare seal, uh, quick connect fittings. So on these lines, I use quick connect fittings for copper instead of doing the flaring and connecting. I only flared the lines on the outside unit. That's about it. Uh, everything in between here, I use, they're called rector seal quick connects and also rector seal makes the flexible lines also. Those quick connects are pretty pricey. They were $90 but I would say they're worth the money because you literally just cut them off, clean it up and just quick connect and that's it. You don't have to worry about vibration, loosening it up or anything. It was great stuff, good investment. I would say do it. And then I bought some springs, which were completely useless. I was gonna use them to mount. Uh... Originally, if you're familiar, originally I was gonna mount my AC unit on the catwalk. So I had a bracket built to mount it on the catwalk. And then I was gonna build, gonna mount the fuel tank on top. And then I was like, you know, this thing is not gonna last on catwalk. So let me go ahead and change my mind and mount it on the cab. So I did. So my brackets that I had made cost me a lot, a lot more than they should have. But anyways, the AC unit total with everything I just named was $1,350. So $650 for the generator, $1,350 for the AC unit. So we're looking at two thousand dollars right there your bracket and this is where i screwed up my brackets total the bracket on the cab cost me about four hundred dollars to make this guy made it for me it's it's a legit shop it's an aluminum bracket it's not gonna rust it's structurally strong i have a good piece of mind it was four hundred dollars now where i messed up was the previous bracket i had built was like five hundred dollars and i had to scrap that bracket and make it shorter so i could just mount my fuel tank on the outside so the brackets alone ended up costing me like a thousand dollars so we're looking at three grand right off the bat right there and then my fuel tank was 130 dollars u bolts were 200 u bolts were a hundred dollars an extended run fuel line kit for the generator from the fuel tank was $45. So we're looking at 3000 We're looking at about $3,300 for the whole setup. Once I get my extended run fuel tank, fuel tank in there on the catwalk and the bracket and everything, we're looking at about, yeah, $3,300. So that is total what I spent on this setup. How long it's gonna last, how good it's gonna do, only time will tell, I don't know. But to me, I think it's worth it. Uh, APU, used APUs, or you can buy one with like high hours for like 4,000 or whatever, that's all rusted up. That's gonna break down and then you're gonna be paying, you know, expensive thermo king parts prices. With me, everything on this is brand new and I'm hoping it's gonna last. Uh, 
outside unit is, is sitting on the cab. It's got shocks. It's not gonna be rattling and hopefully that lasts also. So we'll see. I think I did a decent job with everything. All in all, $3,300. You know, if you bought a new APU, you're looking at like twelve, thirteen thousand $13,000, if not fourteen, dollars installed. Uh, however, another biggest thing was this is a 21 year old truck you know you just don't know what kind of big repair engine block damage could happen and then you're like well I don't want to invest you know $30,000 into a $20,000 truck to get it running you might just say I'm just gonna give up on this and get a new truck so you just don't know and that's another thing is I didn't want to invest like into an APU right off the bat especially I'm a new owner operator that's a lot of money to scrap down and I don't really want payments uh, so that's another reason why I didn't get an APU and of course you could always transfer from one truck to another but long story short I always had an idea of how to do this and plans and I just wanted to give it a shot but I think if you were doing it yourself you know you're looking at $2,000 to get the inside unit, outside unit generator, 2000. And then I think if you're smart with it, you could definitely get the same setup as I have for under $2,500, especially if you shop around for different AC units, you might even get it for less. So I think for $2,500 to have a setup is, is pretty great. And like I said, it ran for 12 hours on a gallon. And this truck uses about a gallon an hour on idle. And not only that, your truck is damaged the most when it's idling in place, especially when it's hot as hell outside. So just the fact alone that you don't have to idle your truck means a lot. So I mean, if you do the math, let's say average week, if I'm on the road, you know, consistently, let's say I idle the truck for 50 hours a week. 50 hours a week times $3 a gallon is $150. Truck uses 50 gallons, this thing will use five gallons so hundred fifty dollars is what the truck will use on idle don't even include the repairs on the truck because of that idle uh, and the generator itself will use five gallons so right off the bat I'm saving hundred thirty five dollars a week hundred thirty five dollars a week times four weeks is five hundred forty dollars a month so in course of you know decently cold months and hot summer days where you would idle your truck to stay hot to, to keep it hot in here or to keep it cold i would say if we say five months out the year for one year that's twenty five hundred dollars you're gonna save plus you're sleeping a lot more comfortably in here i don't think you can really beat that that's just my two cents and uh yeah i mean anything happens to generator craps out go buy a new one for two three hundred bucks and call it a day uh, unlike you know thermal king oh you have a warranty you got to make an appointment you got to drop it off you got to wait for parts this and that i see people with brand new apus on their truck and they're idling the truck you know but who am i to judge but yeah anyways i think that that's gonna do it for today's video i'm just not gonna do any point of views i'm just going home uh gonna deliver this load tomorrow morning and then i actually have a really short run 230 miles literally 800 pounds auto parts delivery to Danville, Illinois out of St. Louis and I'm just gonna get a load back so I left on the road Saturday afternoon and I'm home tomorrow morning tomorrow morning is Wednesday and then after Wednesday if everything works out I should be back home Thursday evening or even before that it's only four hours away from home so I would say good week good gross uh, decent miles definitely good i hope you like the video if you have any questions feel free to ask uh and we'll go from there thank you guys for watching stay safe y'all and uh hit the subscribe if you haven't and catch y'all in the next one